I thought I'd better chime in here and um, say why I'm making this bench. It's mainly for sawing purposes. It's better to have the saw at the level of your elbow. And I'm also making this really for more detailed work. My big work bench is perfectly adequate for most things, like so you can lean over it and get into stuff, clamping and stuff. But for sawing, it needs to be higher. thought I'd better chime in here and explain what's going on. This piece of wood I picked for the jaws had some metal in it and I decided to lever it open and try and save it, get the metal out and still use it. I personally like wood that's got defects in it. Um, I like to exaggerate them or, somehow, or include them in my work really. Although this went back together pretty well, I'm not going to take any chances. I'll find voids later on, so I'm going to fill it with epoxy as well. I'm not sure how this is going to, what it's going to be like with a chisel later on when I do the lamb's tongue. We'll find out. When the epoxy is coming out the other side because you haven't checked it like me, tape it up and clamp it to a flat surface like that and you'll be fine. Then I have to show you something. What's it gonna be, Matthew? Hockey or sex? More plain in Miss Holly. I hope this makes sense. The shaded areas are gonna be the waste areas and the lines are just gonna be the cut lines for this tenon. Here's a good example of why I want a 45 degree bevel on this jaw I'm making. With it out that far out from the vise, when you're sawing the woods, woods vibrating a bit, and I can't cut to my line with it in the middle of the jaws of that vise. I'm using the domino here for perfect alignment and also to stop things slipping and gluing up later.
torque this up pretty much just to give you an idea of what's going to be going on inside that joint with those wedges because I also tapered the adjoining pieces as you can see so when the wedges go in it nicely fills that joint. This is a case of softly, softly catchy monkey and sneaking up on it, nice and slow. You'll want to tap these in nice and evenly, otherwise, when you come to flush trimming it, it won't the it won't be even basically. It's just not comfortable sawing like this. I mean, at this point, I'm on my knees on the floor trying to saw it. It's kind of irrelevant to you guys what height extra I'm adding onto my normal workbench. 
Because it just depends on your own body size, where your arms are, where your wrists are, where your elbows are, etc. So it's for you to decide that really. But I've moved mine, this is 200 mil taller when, it, when it's finished. I added the sanded disc here just in case I slip with the chisel because that's pretty near close to finished surface and a little whack with that chisel make a nice little dent and I'll have to go down a good millimetre to put it right. This is actually a lot easier than it looks to do. I mean, the best tip I can give you is to keep the front of that chisel line kind of parallel to your exit line as it were. Use the chisel half the width of what you're trying to cut and then you might get a bit of a belly and then you just chisel that out nice and finely. Don't try and take out anything more than one millimetre though. It's also a good idea before you start this to read the grain direction. Now if you had grain that's sort of coming up and then sloping back down into the wood, if you try and hit this with a chisel you're probably just going to smash out a lump of it instead of nice thin shavings like this. Here's a great example why you should wait until you've got your hardware or decided on it before you make everything. The long and short of it all was I basically had some Acme thread, which is what they call it in the States, and I wanted to get some wheels, hand wheels, to match this thread. What an impossible job that was. Couldn't find an engineering firm that could cut the corresponding female threads on the hand wheels you could buy on everywhere on eBay, etc. What it all but came down to basically this kit that I'm using here costs less than if you buy all the bits individually and this kit is from Poland. It is an actually bad kit but I would have preferred not to have those flanges on the back like that. I expected a nut like every other set but there you are.
I'm just using these lever clamps for an example. I need to buy some other bench dogs that will work. Normally as normal bench dogs do, but you know, it shows the purpose though. Eh? 